のタイミングを待っていましたこれを何これ遺伝子鑑定書俺と姫川さん父親が同じなんですよ教えてくれませんかあなたの父親のことオシノコビンゴカード。First off, I think Oshinoko this season has just been on another level.、Uh, if you guys are familiarized with the content I did during the first season, you know I think that the episode one was the most spectacular episode, like probably top 10 number one episodes in all of anime ever. And I think it was shortly followed up by a good season. Okay to good season, just depending on what episode. Some of them are really great, blah, 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 blah. Okay. But I think episode or I think season two. You know, the second season, especially the second half of the, of the second season so far, has just been on just,、uh, just a tear, just on fire. Like, it's made me interested in their plays. It's made me interested more in their characters.、Um, I still think that the, the thing that lacks the most substance for me, or I, no, let me not say substance. I think the thing that I lack the most interest in is the thing that the plot is centered around, which is Aqua's Revenge. And、uh, I know a lot of you guys have talked to me about, like, oh, well, you know, Aqua isn't who he was before, or whatever. But it, it's just, to me, it's an impossibility for somebody to lose 30, 40 years of life memories just because they're now reincarnated into a kid or whatever. I understand that he's lived his second life now, and I's revenge is kind of driving him forward. Uh, and I think it has a lot to do with, like, you know, honestly, mental illness, a little psychopathic. I think there's some definitely, definitely, there's some mental things that have occurred that have scarred him and that are pushing him forward heavily. And I think it's, it's a serious, like, psychological,、uh, you know, I think he has some serious psychological problems、uh, at this point. But the reality is, I just don't think that you can really dissuade me from saying, like, oh, yeah, but he, you know, he did in fact live a 30, 40 year old life before. And now he's living 15, 16, 17 years. So, you know, he's, you know, by all happenstances, he has 50 plus years of life experience. And a lot of times he doesn't move. Uh, accordingly to that. Now, he does still make very intelligible and intelligent decisions, just like he did at the end of this episode. I think Aqua, you know, doing his due diligence with DNA testing, knowing how to do them, where to go, doing all that stuff, I think that is using the past knowledge. So that just kind of solidifies the fact that, well, he didn't completely,、uh, you know, not utilize his doctorate, you know, whatever. Uh, and he did that. So, and he, he's been doing DNA tests and stuff, and he's found out that he now has a half brother with the same. Father as his father, so、uh, him and, and Ruby's father, you know, biologically at least,、uh, had relations with I and now has relations with this, with this kid,、uh, Amamiya, something like that. I don't know what his name is exactly,、uh, but he has relations with this kid, so they share the same father, which I think is really, really cool. Now, the one interesting thing about that is he's about three or four years his senior, so his dad. My, or biological dad must have been around in this actor、uh, circle and stuff. And that's kind of how he got with I or whatever else. So, again, not, you know, that twist I did not see coming. I think that is a really, really cool twist to the story. But going back, you know, two minutes,、uh, I think the main plot of Aqua's Revenge is the least interesting to me. For me, this, the, this, se- this season has really built up to more Kana, more Kana, more Kana, more Kana,、uh, more Akane. See more of their past, see more of what's been driving them, see more of this Tokyo Blade stuff, see more of these supporting characters,、uh, see more of what's you know, what's going on with all of them. Very little Ruby, that's kind of the one you know, thing that we haven't really gotten a lot, but I think all the supporting stuff that we've gotten so far has just been so good. And this episode solidified it even further with that big twist at the end, but they really pulled off the,、uh, the, the play. You know, Akiba Sensei was like, oh my God, like this is so good. All the audience reacted so much so.、Uh, the director, G- Gotanda, or whatever his name is,、uh, the Taishi guy with the long hair, was like really, you know, praising Aqua for his acting here. 
Uh, Aqua got praised a lot for what he pulled off with Akane. Akane pulled off that perfect eye moment to compliment uh, Aqua as she was able to pull that out of him, and shockingly so. Uh, the little moment where uh, at the end where Aqua was like, carrying Akane out of the stage and, and Akane looked at him like, bitches like that was a hilarious moment like i think this episode was just they just nailed every part of this episode i thought it was really really good uh for everything that it did and then that big setup at the end of the episode with trying to get the director out but really aqua's goal was this i'm a, I'm a mia guy or whatever his name is um and finding out about his half brother and stuff I was like holy shit that is awesome so this season again just has been on another level this episode was absolutely fantastic i think they nailed everything that they were going for this episode uh and i love the button up and they really got me suspend suspended and suspenseful uh at the end of the episode with like the oh shit like oh he got a half brother what uh they got me so i really really love that quite a bit so yeah i'm leaving you guys some those simple thoughts there let me know you guys thoughts in the comments down below but this episode chef's kiss really really good episode can't wait to see next week on what comes after this now conversation uh, and this door that just got blown open. All right, my friends, I'll see you then. Peace.